But the trends we're observing and the technologies and practices emerging around us that are already helping shape the future, we can begin to imagine how all of these elements might combine and coalesce into larger stories about who we'll be as people and what higher education will be in the future. Scenario for Growth, Workforce-Driven Higher Education. Priya nestles into the corner of her couch, her morning coffee in one hand, a VR remote in the other. Through her VR lenses, she navigates across a virtual college campus toward a towering glass data strategies building, where she's registered to earn a three-month credential in machine learning algorithms. Just a year ago, her employer, a national food store chain, offloaded most of her responsibilities to a new AI-powered platform and offered Priya the opportunity to return to school to acquire new skills needed to help manage that platform. With two teenagers and a mortgage and a growing desire for something new, she jumped at the opportunity. Her employer subsidizes most of her second career learning, covering the cost of tuition and learning materials and offering a few hours of paid time each week needed for learning and coursework. She has the option of earning additional credentials and more personal interest She's earned a creative writing credential a few months ago, though those credentials have to be earned on her own time and expense. The virtual campus is live with activity, teeming with student avatars coming and going. Groups huddle over here and there in private conversations. Priya stops and toggles over the participants icon. It shows 112,350 students currently logged into campus. Map view, she says, a display of the United States zooms in and shows a scattering of dots in the northeast and down the coast into Florida. Formerly a four-year brick-and-mortar institution planted in the hills of Arkansas and primarily pulling in traditional students from its surrounding communities, the school is now all but completely virtual and widely dispersed across the eastern United States. It boasts nearly triple enrollments over the past five years, especially among adult learners. Priya takes a sip of her coffee. How am I doing, she asks. A dashboard pops into view, displaying a series of graphs and data points. A warm, automated voice responds, you are still on track to complete your credentials on time, but your employer has recommended you for an additional advanced module in team leadership skills. She smiles. Okay, let's do it. In this future, unfettered growth of AI technologies has led to widespread and substantive changes to the global workforce across most industries. Enrollments among multi-career adult learners far outpace the numbers of traditional students, which have continued their decades-long decline. The public's perception of the benefits and usefulness of higher education has started to climb, even for some liberal arts programs that have successfully promoted the durability and importance of the less technical skills they provide. Scenario for Collapse, Higher Education's Political Tides. Devin loads the last bin of his luggage into the trunk of his car, pressing it down so that he can close the latch. His car is filled to the brim. He's leaving home for the first time in his life and driving several states away to attend college. He doesn't want to leave the family and friends and places he knows and loves, but the political tides of his home state are casting him away. Nearly a decade ago, state leadership put forward new standards for post-secondary curriculum and assessment infusing those standards with their own political and moral values, and mandating that institutions adhere to those standards or lose all state funding and support. In the months that followed, some institutions saw waves of students, faculty, and staff exit in protest and simply couldn't maintain enrollments and operations. I'm halfway through my semester and half of my professors are gone, Devin's cousin once told him over a family dinner a few years back. Other institutions shored up their values and pushed back against the state's new standards but couldn't stay afloat once state funding dried up and alternative private sources of funding proved insufficient. Most of the institutions in the state that remained open did so by embracing, or at least accommodating, the new educational standards. Standards that Devin, in good conscience, simply couldn't accept for his own personal learning journey. I wish you'd reconsider, Devin's mother says, making one final plea as she watches her son finish loading his car. I'll visit soon, and often, Devin replies. He thought about forgoing college altogether so that he wouldn't need to uproot and move away. His friends, who decided not to enroll in college, seemed to be doing well enough, and his mother had offered him a decent entry-level job at her medical practice. Most people didn't really seem to need a college degree anymore. 
at least if all the reports and news stories were to be believed. Still, Devin knows the choice he's making is the best one for him. He waves to his parents through the car window and puts the car in drive. In this future, global political division and conflict is putting pressure on higher education institutions. More and more institutions find themselves faced with an impossible choice, aligned with local, state, and federal political and moral ideologies, thereby alienating a large portion of learners and instructors and staff, or lose vital state and federal funding and face inevitable shutdown. Higher education has experienced widespread turnover in both institutional leadership and faculty. State officials are more closely involved not only in vetting and selecting institutional leaders who will support the state's political and moral values, but also in ousting institutional leaders who won't support those values. Faculty, seeing their intellectual and academic freedoms erode, resign from their positions en masse, either seeking friendlier institutions elsewhere or pursuing new careers altogether. Scenario for constraint, data-restricted higher education. Alex walks briskly along the red brick sidewalk that winds up to the STEM building, their head tilted down and forward with determination. They're running late for class, thanks in no small part to his traffic jam that their old folded city map was no help in navigating around. Just to the left of the STEM building's front entryway and resting at the edge of a thicket of blackberry bramble, a digital lockbox kiosk stands with half of its small metal doors shut and padlocked. Alex finds an open locker and places their phone and laptop inside. They forgot their padlock today, but the padlocks are more of a psychological salve. The biometric encryption on Alex's device wouldn't allow anyone else to use the device anyway. On the side of the kiosk, amid flyers for tutoring services at social clubs, a sign cautions passersby. No digital devices beyond this point. Next to the sign, a poster asks, is data pollution dragging you down? Data busters can help you eliminate unnecessary personal data. An image on the poster shows a student struggling under the weight of data graphs and algorithms piled up on their back. Inside the building, Alex half runs, half walks down a short corridor to their classroom. Sunlight cuts into the hallway and beams through windows centuries older than anyone in the building. I'm so sorry to be so late, Alex announces to a room full of students. The students settle into their seats and open their paper pads, pencils, in hand, ready to scratch down notes. Alex tests a marker or two on the whiteboard before finding one with enough ink. I have a few handouts for you today that we need to go over, including your study guide for next week's test, Alex says. But first, I need to make a correction to one of the equations I showed you last time. The squeaking of marker and scratching of pencils fills the room. A song can faintly be heard as outside one of the old windows across the hall, a starling alights on the branch of a blackberry bramble. In this future, widespread surges in cybercrime are all over the news. Media outlets compare online environments to crime riddled metropolitan areas, cautioning the public to shore up their data and device protection or to simply stay offline whenever possible. Security and privacy advocates find allies in climate and ethics leaders who decry the environmental and human costs of excessive data collection and use, gaining sufficient influence to lead sweeping social and political changes in national and global data practices. The use of personal devices on campus networks is strictly prohibited or significantly reduced and heavily monitored. Coursework, research, and collaboration are exclusively done on closed networks and devices or through more back-to-basics analog methods. A yawning digital divide opens between these institutions and back-to-basics institutions, as does an ideological divide on the purpose of and best approaches to education. Scenario for Transformation – Individualized Higher Education Hello, Madison. The greeting fades in and then out as Madison logs into her learning portal. Her seat on the train is cramped, but she adjusts the size of her hollow screen to fit comfortably on the seat back tray in front of her. The Peruvian countryside rushes by outside her window. Madison pulls her to-do list onto the screen and lets out a sigh. 200 pages of Faulkner to read before the end of the week. She points a finger at the I need help icon to the side of the task. And the system thinks for a moment. A message pops up. You have two hours left in your train ride. Based on your average reading speed and comprehension scores, 
And with the recommended assisted re review, you can get 65 pages of this book read by the time you reach your destination. Madison furrows her brow. She points at the give me more help button at the bottom of the message. The system thinks once more, for slightly longer this time. Your sleep patterns have been erratic the last few days, likely due to your travel. The message reads, and I see that your schedule tomorrow is light, adjusting for your current state of elevated exhaustion and shifting a portion of this task to your schedule tomorrow, I recommend reading 35 pages during your train ride today. That's better, Madison says as she closes the message. She pulls the book up on her screen and begins to read. As she reaches the end of the first page, a light bulb icon appears on the screen with another message. The page you've just read contains important details for your upcoming comprehension assessment. Would you like to see an in-depth review of these details now or save this review for later? Madison opts to save review for later, which prompts another, more urgent message. You have failed to complete past reviews, which has likely impacted your assessment scores so far this term, the message cautions. Your instructor has recommended that you complete your reviews as you read rather than saving them for later. Would you like to see an in-depth review now? Madison huffs and waves her hand to power down the hollow screen. She shifts and settles into her seat and closes her eyes to rest as the countryside rushes by. In this feature, declining public perceptions of higher education and the mounting student debt crisis has exacerbated enrollment challenges for institutions. Higher education leaders call for institutions to improve their value to learners by refocusing in hyper-individualized instruction and a commitment to the greater good. New AI technologies and analytic capabilities help guide individual students along their educational journey. These tools provide instruction, responsive coursework prompts and assistance, tailored learning content and materials, and individualized pathways toward each student's program and learning outcomes. Students are viewed not only as learners, but also increasingly as digital consumers with expectations fitted to the global digital economy. Public perceptions of the value of higher education slow the decline and even increase among some segments, and enrollments begin to turn around for those institutions with the resources to support the data and digital infrastructure needed for hyper-personalization. These scenarios represent only potential futures, of course. The best we can do in the present day is use exercises like these to get better at anticipating and planning and to practice creative thinking about our future grounded in the best information we have available to us so that we can be more prepared to face whatever future does eventually arrive.